Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, as you can see, looking at a couple of uh, PC Engine uh, controllers here. Um, now, I fixed one of these previously. Actually, it just needed a clean up. Um, it was similar to the, you know, the first, the white one I picked up. Uh, it's a bit dirty actually on the outside here, which needs a bit of a clean. Um, and as you've seen in the previous video, you can swap out the uh, silicons and things from some of those uh, replacement uh, Famicom um, and NES um, controller, you know, silicons. Those work fine in these. Um, but the problem with these is the pins are bent. Uh, you probably won't be able to see this. I'll just put you on Super Macro. So we're on Super Macro here now, and you can see this pin uh, here is bent a little bit, and this one. Um, so it. You know, I could actually just literally just put this in here, just gently move it. I've got some replacement connectors, um, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but in theory, that's all I need to do is just inspect it and uh, move any that are manipulated. There's one there, you can see this, this one's bent quite considerably. That needs to go back over here somewhere. But yeah, I'll do that, I'll show you the end result and uh, I'll test it. Perhaps just clean up the inside. Um, and we'll do the same with this Avenue uh, Pad 6 here. Um, I wanted one of these six blood controllers. There's not many games to use it. I think Street Fighter is one of them. There might be one or two of the games, I'm not sure. Um, but I think, uh, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I think one or two of these buttons might replicate this here. So, um, could be wrong. We'll soon find out. But that means that games that do use the run or the select button, you know, as part of the normal controls there, it's just a little bit easier, <laughs> you know, because, uh, you know, the buttons, uh, you don't have to move your thumb as far and stuff. So hopefully you can see there, I've done a good job of straightening the others up. Now, just I've just left one that just needs a little bit of adjustment here. Um, you can just see it here, this one. Um, all you need to do is just get a really small flat blade and just really carefully, you know, grab hold of that pin, you know, just and just do that. Just gently do that, not too hard, and you just want to go forwards or backwards, um, and not too much and too fast because you'll create a, a, a fracture, you know. A, fatigue uh, break effectively in it but if you just do a little bit of that really gently you can manipulate them back into position uh, not sure what's coming out so they're all pretty much bang straight on now so I mean I've got the you know I've got some replacement connectors here let's just have a quick look at these sorry I know the focus is going to be uh, all over the place but I'm just curious they're 8 pin hopefully they're exactly the same um, yeah so let's stick it the right way up uh, yes, they are. Can you see that? So you can, you know, you can just swap one of these out for a replacement connector. Um, I'll keep these as spares, but I think right now I'll just, I'll just adjust them a tiny, tiny little bit because they're they're not quite uh, as good as I would like up here. I don't think because um, that, that should be a perfectly straight line. I think so. This one perhaps needs moving up. One or two of these moving down a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'll give it a try on the PC Engine. Just really gently put it in there a few times, just to make sure it's uh, it's connecting okay. And maybe test it. Yeah, that's sorted now. Uh, now it does take a bit of uh, practice trying to work out the easiest way to put these in when you've bent the pins back. Because if you try and push it straight on, it's very hard. You can't seem to get a key. I've put it from the left hand side, uh, just gently like that. It goes in, no problems, and the pins are all fine. So. Just be mindful if you if you have bent some of the pins on these, you might not uh, you know you might need to find you know the the best way of connect reconnecting it. Let's say you know just moving it around like this to get the right uh, angle so that you're not uh, bending the pins again. And they're not. It's just if I put it for the side like that, it connects uh, really well. There, it's, it feels like it's making a good connection. Um, and over time, obviously, it will the pins will straighten out a bit more. I mean, you could do a bit of this here. Uh, a little bit but yeah over time with a number of insertions and removals um, yeah it should get back to almost uh, as, as it originally was yeah it's going in straight now yeah and they're perfectly okay I don't you can see that we've got uh, yeah no problems at all so I'll test that now just make sure it works so it's exactly the same with this one two pins at the bottom bent straighten them out um, and just carefully put it in it works fine as you can see, uh, the key with these to avoiding damage uh, and, and dealing with you know where you bent them back afterwards is just making sure that when you push it in, you don't push it in too hard, and you try and get one side, and just make sure it feels like it's naturally sliding in and there's no resistance. Um, but yeah, you know as you can see, I go on this side here, just get the little that outer edge, and then just gently push it forward, no problems at all. 
So just quickly here, I thought we'd uh, just test these actually. I think this is a uh, pad test program, if I remember. I think it's in the homebrew folder actually. I think it's one of these things that was uh, developed by Chris Covell. Uh, yeah, there you go, it says Chris Covell uh, version 1. Um, so you can see those two buttons work fine. Uh, direction buttons. Excellent. So I'll swap over now to the um, Avenue Pad 6. So on the Avenue Pad 6 here, you can see you get exactly the same thing. Uh, um, but when you switch, I'll show you, when you switch the AB mode switch here, it changes the image there. You can see you know, he's put that in there as well. I didn't expect that, but he's put that image in there and it tests all six buttons. As you can see, they're all working fine. Uh, obviously it's worth testing the auto fires as well, put slow motion on, that's slow motion. And auto fire one, uh, one. which one's the one button? That one. So you can see auto fire off, auto fire on, and um, we'll do the same with the next one. Oh, sorry, that's slow motion, where's it going now? That one. Yeah, auto fire on or off. So these pads aren't quite as good as the original ones because you've only got sort of, you know, single fire or you've got you know, rapid fire, you've not got the in-between speed that you get on the standard um, you know, duo controller, etc. But yeah, that's working fine. Hope you find that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.